Okay. So now on to the level three question. And so let f of n be the product of all positive integers less than n that are relatively prime to n. And so we want to find the number of integers n from 2 to 50. The number of integers to n from 2 to 50 such that n divides f of n plus 1. And so first of all, one thing we can note is that this is basically equivalent to finding the n such that f of n is congruent to negative 1 mod n. And so, excuse me for a second. Okay, sorry about that. So, now, so one thing we know is that as long as the k and n, they're just, as long as k and n share no common factors, then there is a unique inverse of k. Basically, there is a k to the negative one such that this equation is, this congruence is true. And so, yeah. And as long as k squared is not congruent to one mod n, then that means that the inverse inverses can pair off. And the reason that if k squared is congruent to 1 is true, then we can't pair them off is because the inverse itself is just equal to the number. And in that case, trying to pair them off is useless because there's only one to begin with. And so now, if but if k squared is, k squared is congruent to 1 mod n, then we also have that n minus k squared is congruent to negative k squared or k squared. And we already know that this is congruent to 1 mod n. And so that means that now we can do a pairing between k and n minus k. And here we're assuming that n is not equal to 2. Because if n is equal to 2, then this won't work. So n equals 2 is a special case that we'll treat later on. And so now we have that k times n. So now we have that k times n minus k is congruent to negative k squared or negative 1 mod n. And so that means that these pair up to negative 1. And this is. So, as long as n is not equal to 2, then there is no k such that k squared is congruent to 1 mod n, and k is congruent to, okay, yeah, k is congruent to n minus k mod n. So, there's, this is never true, as long as n is not equal to 2, because it requires that n is even. And so that means that the total product mod n is just congruent. Oh, and in this case, we're once again ignoring the two case. So everything from here is going to be ignoring n equals 2. And so now we can see that the total product. Sorry. Okay. The total product is negative 1 to the x over 2, where there are x number, or there are x amount of k, such that k squared is congruent to 1 mod n. Okay. And so, if p is prime, and i is a positive integer, then the number of solutions to k squared is congruent to 1 mod p is 2. If p is odd, 
or if p equals i equals 2. And otherwise, it's 4. And this is when p equals 2 and i is at least 3. And so now we can use the Chinese remainder theorem. And if we apply that, we can see that the if the product is congruent to negative one, then n is equal to p to the k, two times p to the k, or four. And in this case, p cannot be equal to two, where p is not equal to two. And so now, if we manually check n equals 2, it works. And so now we just need to check the ones of this form. Or more accurately, we can also record 4 and ignore it here. So we just need to look at these two. So first of all, we can find all the numbers that are in the form p to the k. And so we can just casework off of what the base prime is. So 3, 9, and 27, the next is 81, and that's too large. 5 and 25, the next is too large, 7, 49, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, <clears throat> 43, and 47. And so, I'm just, so now I'll circle the ones that will need to be double counted. And so this, 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 and this will be double counted for the two times p to the k case. And so if we count this up, this leads to a total of 28. And there are a total of, there were already two here, so 28 plus 2, and that's equal to 30. And so the answer is 30. So does anyone have any questions about this problem? Okay, that's not. In that case, let's move on to the level four question. And so n is a positive integer. And so sorry. And so so n is a positive integer, and so we're defining a sequence by letting a1 be equal to n, and for each k greater than 1, we let a k be the unique integer in the range 0 to k minus 1 inclusive, such that this sum is divisible by k. And so this is an example. So n, n is equal to 9, then it just goes 9, 1, 2, 0, 3, 3, 3, yeah, so on. And so now we want to show that for any n, the sequence a1, a2, a3, so on, is eventually constant. <clears throat> eventually. So it doesn't have to be at the very same. And so, first of all, define the variable sk to equal a1 plus a2 plus all the plus ak. The s is just for some. And so now we let bk be the average value of the a's. So basically, as k divided by k. And this is the average value. And so by the definition, definition of s, we have that sk plus 1 is equal to sk plus ak plus 1. And so we now we can substitute in sk equals k times bk. And sk plus 1 is just converse in the same manner equal to k plus 1 times bk plus 1. And so when we substitute this in, what we get is k plus 1 times bk plus 1 is equal to k times bk plus a k plus 1. And so what that leads to is bk plus 1 is equal to k times bk plus a k plus 1 divided by k plus 1. And so this is equal to k over k plus 1 times bk 
plus ak plus 1 over k plus 1. And so now we have that k over k plus 1 times bk is less than 1 times bk, which is obviously just bk. And so now we also have that ak plus 1 over k plus 1 is at most k minus 1 over k plus 1. Sorry, not k minus 1. Is at most k over k plus 1, which is less than 1. And so what that leads to is that bk plus 1 is less than bk plus 1. And so now, remember how we define bk. And so we're given in the problem that ak is defined such that the sum is divisible by k. And so what that means is that bk is always an integer. And so since this is true, then that means that bk plus 1 is at most bk. And so now we have that bk forms a sequence. Uh, okay, forms a non-increasing sequence of positive integers. And this always is eventually constant. And the reason for this is just because it never increases. And at the same time, it has to be greater than a certain value at all times. And so yeah. So that means that B K bk plus 1 is equal to bk for a large enough b. And so what that means is that we have that ak plus 1 for this specific value of k, ak plus 1 is equal to sk plus 1 minus sk, which is equal to k plus 1 times bk plus 1 minus k times bk. And this is equal to k plus 1 times bk minus k times bk, which is just equal to bk. And so that means that ak's are eventually constant. And so that proves the question. And so did anyone have any questions regarding this problem? Or the previous one? Okay, if not, then thank you for coming. And so the video recording will be posted later to the classroom. And next week, the guest lectures, guest speakers will be Chris Gua and Alex Chen. And so thank you for coming again, and see you next week.